exercise or demonstrate a strong oversight on anti-fraud control activities, uh, the board has to challenge or ought to challenge uh, the senior management on what is the process they follow in the identification of the fraud risks and also the control activities that are there around that. So to just to explain that further, let me give you some examples. Like the board can, as a part of their oversight role, look at some of these aspects. One, tone at the top. For that, what they need to do. They need to actually question and ask uh, what is uh, uh, the trend and the patterns in case of the past incidents of frauds, uh, how has the management dealt with it? What actions have been taken? Did it Was it indicative of any sort of ethical violation, uh, which would be indicative of whether the tone at the top is not being communicated effectively is one aspect of it. Uh, second is uh, fraud control policies. So very important. The fraud control prevention and detection policies need to be communicated across the organization so as to understand or believe that all employees understand uh, what are the ethical business practices that they ought to follow and in case of any uh, you know wrongdoing that they see happening within the organization, they understand who to escalate, who to report and they also have the confidence that the senior management will action on that. So these are some of the fraud prevention, detection and response uh, policies that the board or uh, this is a document through which the same gets communicated. The third aspect is very important as we repeatedly uh, you know, talk about it is the whistleblowing mechanism. Now in case of a whistleblowing mechanism, first thing to check is, is the whistleblower system effective within the organization. Many organizations have maybe a mechanism that operates internally or may have been outsourced to an independent service provider or a third party. Most important to look at in today's time is to see how effective is that. And in order to do that, there is a second aspect to it is to see as to how frequently uh, the uh, same is being communicated to the employees and what is the kind of communication that goes out goes out in order to build awareness about the mechanism in place. Also very importantly to check is cases or the incidents that got reported to the mechanism, what are the trends and the patterns of the issues that get escalated through this mechanism because that could once again be an indication of how effective has been your communication, how much do the employees understand uh, uh, the uh, code of ethics and the other policies uh, that are you know uh, present in the organization. The fourth aspect is the fraud risk management which is basically as to how robust is the fraud risk assessment uh, within the organization carried out and how are the findings being communicated to the board and how are they being addressed. Okay, so these are some of the questions that the board need to ask and need to be aware that these are important elements or points for consideration that need to be questioned. The last point or the aspect I would say is on investigating the frauds. So importantly, what needs to be seen here is, has the company developed a system for a prompt and a competent investigation, uh, which is because investigation of those suspected or known frauds because that would be indicative of how much confidence and trust will the employees then develop to escalate issues okay so the board now therefore to just sum it up or to uh, kind of uh, as a part of the oversight exercise the board now needs to see that how do the organizations encourage ethical business environment in the organization and this can be done uh, by you know conducting a fraud and ethics awareness uh, survey if I may call it or an ethical dilemma workshop which is essentially conducted to assess or gauge the attitude awareness and willingness of the employees to comply with the code and also report for any violations that they see. So that would be a, a very good way to kind of ensure that the ethical business environment prevails and also it helps in identifying any emerging key issues that the organizations uh, uh, would need to be made, uh, aware of. 
so that's the key uh, uh, anti-fraud activities oversight that the board can exercise.